Ladies and gentlemen, I'm full of optimism. Einstein's theory of relativity. And we're still seeing it quite well through that haze. The fight we join e equals MC. That all men are created equal. About the future innovation and growing strength in the air. This is Finding Your Frequency with your hosts, Jeff Spinard and Ryan Treasure. It's time to speak up, share your voice, and hear from the thought leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wonderful episode of Finding Your Frequency. I am your host, Ryan Treasure, and boy, do we have a great show for you all today. You know, there's just been so much uh, craziness going on in the world in the last several months with the, uh, you know, the COVID virus and the new normal. And I swear if I hear the new normal one more time on the news, I'm probably going to explode. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of shifts in happening, a lot of things going uh, on. Some states are reopening. Uh, some uh, people are, uh, are some people are wearing masks. Some people aren't. Some people are social distancing. Some people aren't. You know, so it's definitely an interesting time. And, you know, when you when you sit down and kind of think about, you know, all the things that are going on and whether you, you know, are, are now working from home or you're back in the office, you know, some of the things I think that are really important for people to to think about is your health, um, your 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 vascular health, your muscle health, your your spine health, your back. You know, a lot of us who uh, work in an office, uh, for me in a studio, you know, always sitting in a chair, or you know, some of those things can really uh, f can really flare up and and cause some issues. And you know, I was in a car accident about a month ago. Uh, thank the good Lord, I'm still alive, and you know, uh, got my my vehicle totaled and was able to go to the chiropractor get some adjustments on my back which have been very helpful uh, and we're going to kind of talk about some of those things today because if you're not healthy how can you take care of your family if you can't take care of yourself you can't take care of the other people that are important to you and so I think that's uh, a great lesson for us to learn and to think about as uh, thought leaders as parents uh, as human beings in this world right we got to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and so we want to talk a little bit about um, orthopedics and some of the things that are wrapped around that with our awesome guest today. Uh, we're going to talk to Dr. Brian Cole. He's the founder and driving force behind Inglewood Spine Associates. It's the state-of-the-art medical facility that provides expert care uh, in minimally evasive cervical and lumbar total disc replacements and endoscopic targeted surgery. Dr. Cole's conservative care has landed him on several lists, including Castle and Connolly Regional Top Doctors in 2016 to 2019 and uh, Jersey's Top Doctor uh, and New York metro area top doctor. So here we got Dr. Brian Cole, the top doctor on, right here on Finding Your Frequency. Welcome, sir. Hello. How are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, we really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Uh, I know you're running a practice and, you know, to kind of step away from that and have a conversation with us is just wonderful. So we really appreciate you being on the show. And I can't think of I can't think of anything more important than like you know one's health you know like i was stating earlier like how do you take care of your own family or your kids or stuff at work if you're not healthy if you're not you know vibrant and able to uh be your authentic self right that's that's absolutely correct i mean i, I think a lot of us have been reflective on our own health because we're we're not able to do the normal things that we do um, i'm a spine surgeon so i'm usually in the operating room and this pandemic has uh, caused me to step back. Um, you know, I'm somewhat conflicted because, you know, I have a duty, a responsibility to my community to provide service. But the same token, I'm, you know, we're all afraid that we may uh, catch something. But uh, thank God that uh, I'm healthy, my family's healthy, and we will we will all survive in one way or another. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of my friends and, you know, funny example, one of my really good friends who lives in Tucson, you know, he he's an avid uh, a gym rat, right? He goes to the gym like every day before all this stuff happened. And, um, you know, his wife was trying to get into 
into you know going to the gym with him and that kind of stuff and then you know all of this stuff uh buckled down and now now i'm now i'm getting pictures from them being sent over to me and you know where she would never go to the gym and work out now they have a home gym and uh the two of them are now working out together uh and so there's been a lot of positive things i think that have happened uh when you're kind of forced to sit within your own area and uh and address some things maybe that you've wanted to address for some time but didn't know how to um, you know, having a little extra time on our hands at home uh, can really get the mind going and get people into thinking about, well, hey, I've been doing A, B, and C, and why, and why am I doing that? And, you know, maybe making a change in your, you know, your daily routine to allow some other items uh, in your life that allows you to become healthier. I know, you know, myself, uh, I had been doing martial arts several years ago and hadn't been doing any classes for you know almost four or five years and you know with the pandemic and all of this stuff starting up I just decided you know what why am I going to have my daughter go to karate and I'm not going to go join even though I've been doing uh, martial arts for a long time anyways and so it was like I better get back into it. And so that's one of the things that I've, I've been doing that's different, you know, is now I'm doing a Zoom karate sessions three times a week and the dojo is going to yes, open up yes, next week. Yes. And, you know, all of those things I think have been uh, extremely helpful from a holistic point of view of keeping your mind and body of focus, right? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, that we've all been, uh, we've all had to try to work from home. And unfortunately, we've been, hearing a lot of complaints of back and neck pain. Uh, our home has become our office and some people, uh, they don't have the ergonomic chairs at home. They may be doing work in the bed uh, in a slouch position. And the reality is you put more stress in your back sitting than anything else you do bio biomechanically. So we see a lot of that. We see also the fact that we're under stress and what happens when you're under stress, you clench your shoulders, which is causing sort of a compressive load across the cervical spine. So we see some of those neck ailments uh, as well. Um, but fortunately, I think some people have attempted to try to exercise at home. I know even for myself, we have a Peloton, we have a gym, and my wife and I have found uh, a lot of time to work, work out with one another. I find that we're sharing more time as a family with my kids, uh, sitting down and having a meal. And I think, uh, you know, ultimately I'm eating healthier because uh, we're not eating on the run. We're preparing meals, and I think that's good uh, for creating better fuel in your body. Yeah, no, you bring up a really good point, and that's been similar at my house, too. You know, we would... Uh, Friday night at our house is always family night. So generally that would be the night where, you know, we're going to order pizza or we're going to, you know, go out and have dinner, come home and watch a movie. And, you know, all of our Friday night family nights since all of this has happened have been completely different. It's been like, you know, let's take the opportunity. I have a six year old. So like, let's take the opportunity. Hey, guess what, Marley? You're going to learn how to cook a steak today. You're going to learn how to, uh, you know, uh, saute some vegetables. And it's been it's been enlightening because being forced to you know spend more times indoors and with your family it's like uh you know i'm not driving as much i'm not going anywhere so i'm saving money on gas i'm not eating out i'm saving money there and so it's kind of an interesting thing as not only are we becoming healthier um i'm able to save more money <laughs> <laughs> nice little side benefit yeah right my side hustle is savings <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so, Dr. Cole, um, you know, people don't wake up in the morning and just say, I'm going to be an orthopedic surgeon. You know, that's you know something you, you don't maybe dream about when you're a nine or a 10 year old you know, human being growing up as an adolescent. You know, everybody wants to be a superhero, a fighter pilot or, you know, uh, some something like that. So tell us a little bit about your story, Dr. Cole, and how did you find your frequency in life and in business and, and why do you do what you do? Oh, great. Well, I, I have a sort of a unique story. I mean, I was always uh, interested in science, uh, and I ended up going to, uh, to Columbia University. And one of the things that became a, a very apparent to me is that you obviously have to get good grades. And so when I was uh, in high school, I used to try to steal time on our, uh, it was, I think it was a PDP-11 computer. It was one of those old teletype uh, computers, oh, yeah. and I would, I would steal time to write code. So because I did so well in computers, I decided to uh, major in computer science and minor in pre-med. So, uh, and it's relevant to some of the things that I do later, but, but ultimately I, uh, 
I was a former IBMer. I got a, a job at IBM and the IBM product centers. So I was doing some technical support there for a while. And then I had a little small software company writing code for small companies. And then I got into medical school and I've, I certainly had to push that aside, but I had this notion that I wanted to be a surgeon. Um, and very quickly, uh, when we go through our rotations in school, I became very observant of the different types of, of surgeons. I'm good at my hands, I like to fix things, and my wife says, you know, you're just a glorified carpenter, that's all you are. <laughs> so, um, but in any case, uh, I, I dabbled in maybe cardiothoracic surgery, it just seemed that it was a very onerous task, it was five years of, of uh, general surgery, and uh, to get the two-year cardiothoracic fellowship, you need two years of research. You're talking about nine years of training, uh, after medical school. And I then went to neurosurgery, uh, which I really, really liked, which was seven years. And for whatever reason, I rotated through orthopedic surgery. And it just, uh, the I guess the, the life work balance of the folks that I met, that, you know, it's always important to have good mentors. And so I did some research with my mentor and, and you know, I kind of said to myself, I really, really enjoy orthopedic surgery and that's ultimately what I did. I got into a a residency program in New York City and um, and through the course of the five years of training I, I really still had interest in the spine. Uh, spine is the foundation of our body and so I felt that um, that's what I'm going to do. So I went on and did a spinal surgery fellowship, adult and a pediatric spinal surgery fellowship. And then ultimately landed in northern New Jersey, and I'm in, in private practice there. But, you know, I, I, another thing that uh, part of my past that really became relevant was I, I was always intrigued by miniaturization. And I'm kind of dating myself, but uh, I used to love this movie called The Fantastic Voyage. And it was a, a movie where the scientists were miniaturized uh, in a submarine, and they were able to travel in the body. And I think they were trying to, to uh, get rid of a blood clot in the brain or something like that. But in any case, obviously we can't miniaturize ourselves, but we can miniaturize our surgical tools. And so I do a fair number of endoscopic uh, procedures, which basically is like operating through a straw. The endoscope that we use is sort of the size of a pencil. And what that allows us to do is to get to the spine and take care of various ailments in the spine. And generally in the spine, there, there are three types of, uh, of operations. There's uh, a situation where something is being pinched, uh, a pinched nerve. The second would be um, a situation where you have to stabilize the spine, either if, through an accident or through a deformity or a tumor uh, or some type of disruption of the infrastructure. And then the third is really a combination of those. And so that's that's basically what we do. We, we kind of uh, restore the natural function of both the neck and the low back. The other type of surgery I'm really interested in is motion preservation uh, surgeries. And that would uh, be things like an artificial disc, mm -hmm. which we are now doing in both the neck and the low back. And it's been a phenomenal experience in my practice. I mean, the reality is and let me just go back and explain what a what a fusion is. A fusion sometimes, if we if we find that a part of the body uh, needs stabilization, we will typically put uh, uh, something between the vertebra and the disc to replace it, either a cage uh, along with screws, rods, plates. And when you fuse something, that part of the body is no longer. No it's longer moving. It's not it's mobile stable, anymore. It's not moving. Yeah, it's that, not mobile anymore. Yeah, that was exactly. going to be my question: was how, how does those? Uh, how does the you know uh, the the updated you know neck and lower spine uh, components like how does that, that obviously helps you guys to not to do less fusions, right? That's correct. Um, I um, well, you know, the interesting thing is years ago, uh, many many years ago, uh, when the old farmer uh, busted up his knee or his hip. Before they had knee and hip replacement, they would fuse knees, they would fuse hips. And you know the problem is if you fuse a, a knee, then your hip will have extra stress and will wear out sooner. 
but no one in their right mind today would ever fuse a knee or a hip. You have a, a worn out he, a knee or a hip, you get a knee, a knee replacement or a hip replacement. So why would you fuse the spine? But we didn't have the technology. We we're sort of a little, little behind the, the total joint surgeons until, until recently uh, for a variety of reasons. We now have very, very uh, good implants uh, that we can now implant and it gives the patient uh, complete motion of that segment. Now, we have this thing called adjacent segment disease. And so, to give you an example, if you had a one level cervical fusion, theoretically, you would lose about 10% of your motion. But in reality, you would gain that motion back uh, at the expense of the levels above or below. And those levels will then uh, wear out. And that's what we call adjacent segment disease, which occurs at a rate of one to 3% per year. So by putting in a new disc, you're basically uh, allowing the patient to get the motion back. And the first few cases that I put in, I, I had some really, really good experiences. I had one patient literally doing jujitsu two days after a surgery. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't tell the guy to do that, but I was <laughs> impressed that he could do that, but I didn't tell him to do that. Uh, but it really woke me up and said, wow, this is really amazing. The patient had complete relief of his pain. He's able to move. And in fact, I had to tell the, the physical therapist to say, hey, you know, don't restrict the patients, get them moving, get that. And that's the job of a physical therapist is to restore your motion and your strength. And they do a very, very good job at that. I want to take just a couple of moments out of the show to thank Harry's for sponsoring this radio program. And man, Harry's is such a great product, a great shaving product for men. As you guys know, I'm bald. I have no hair. I rock a goatee. I'm telling you, these are the best razors on the market. They have the greatest gel. Their their stuff is just awesome. I know times are tough right now, but Harry's is still here to help you look your best while saving you a little cash along the way. Even if your business on top and PJ's on the bottom, Harry has your grooming needs covered with high quality blades as low as $2 each delivered straight to your doorstep. Again, I'm a bald guy. You can trust what a bald guy says about razors. It keeps my face nice and clean so I can keep nice lines on my goatee. It also helps me keep my head nicely shaved as well so I can stay looking my best. You can get a trial delivered to your doorstop by going to harrys.com forward slash frequency. Harry's is a return to the essential. Quality, durable blades at a fair price, just $2 a blade. They've cut out the middleman manufacturing blades in their own German factory that's been honing precision blades for a century. That means you get incredibly high quality blades at factory direct prices. Trust me, I've been using this product now for a couple of months. It is amazing. Super convenient. The blade refills are delivered directly to your door on your schedule with or without a subscription. If you don't want to subscribe, just go buy new blades and have them sent on over. In this very challenging time, feel a little bit better about your purchase. 1% of the proceeds are set aside to nonprofit organizations devoting to helping provide access to better health care for men and veterans. You know, finding your frequency, we support the veterans. So you can help support the veterans by using the Harry's product. Also, to help support those who need it most right now, Harry's is donating a million dollars worth of shaving supplies to hospitals across the United States. Who can't get behind that? I know I can. Listeners of the show can redeem their Harry's trial set at harrys.com forward slash frequency. Again, that's harrys.com forward slash frequency. You'll get a weighted ergonomic handle for a firm grip. Those things are wonderful. It's great. A five blade razor with a lubricating strip and a trimmer blade. The rich lathering shave gel. This stuff is amazing. It's got aloe in it. It'll keep your skin nice and hydrated. I use it on my head and my face. It is amazing. You also get a travel blade cover to keep your razors dry and easy to grab on the go. Go to harrys.com forward slash frequency and start shaving better today that's harrys.com forward slash frequency it's always great to have something to be able to be replaced without having to sacrifice some other part of your body you know where yes. uh i couldn't even imagine doing karate classes if i could didn't have the proper range of motion i mean you know a lot of the kata and different uh things that we do in karate uh, have you know 180 degree movements from one side mm -hmm. you know left side to the right side or 360 degree maneuvers where you're turning around completely and a lot of that comes from you know the lower back and torso and hips and we spend a lot of time working on you know those areas of the body and strengthening them um you know to to be 
be able to practice and to to go through the art of karate in a, in a better fashion because those parts of your body, your back and your lower back and all that kind of stuff is you know like your 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 core um, of of your movements, whether you're throwing kicks or you're throwing somebody with your hips or whatever the case may be. And I couldn't even imagine not being able to have uh, you know that level of mo of movement. So I'm I'm glad to know that when I get older, uh, if I do have to have some issues with my back there's a there's a plan there to still allow me to maintain my my mobility because that's extremely important absolutely yeah i mean if you have the right indication for it you know uh, that's great but you know uh, we try to tailor what we need to do to the individual patient uh, situation yeah i love that because you know i've always had this idea of you know they 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 call it the practice of medicine it's not the fact of medicine and uh and so i really like when doctors take that approach of you know looking at an individual and saying okay hey let's let's deal with you specifically versus saying well oh i had another person who had something similar so let's do what i did to them to you you know which is which is kind of some guesswork in my opinion versus you know really well, yeah. getting down into the into the nitty gritty of that specific person and what they need to, to be honest with you the surgery is the easy part the hard part is the investigation i mean you have to we have to identify the pain generator because if you don't get that right, then you're actually performing a procedure or an operation on someone that is not the right operation and ultimately will not decrease their pain. Yeah, it's when, like, when your, it's like your, your car up, overheating and you replacing a cylinder head when all you needed was a radiator. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so so we, we always start out, you know, and most patients who have pain, um, I try to make them understand part of my job is education to say that, you know, most of these ailments will resolve with conservative care. And when it, and most of these things will resolve by six weeks. Um, now, when it gets beyond six weeks, now it's got our attention because it's, it's not living up to what we would expect. And then we have to delve in uh, deeper in terms of what's going on here. So we, we simply will start off very easy with medication, um, uh, typically would use an anti-inflammatory uh, or muscle relaxant and then we'll we'll add Tylenol to the mix which uh, really really uh, helps to potentiate the effects of the anti-inflammatory we call it a hamburger helper right so <laughs> um, patients uh, typically are familiar with Advil or Aleve or some of the over-the-counter preparations and so I'll tell them just instead of taking two Advil take two Advil and then take two Tylenol is probably just as effective as taking the full strength ibuprofen or the full strength uh, Aleve or uh, Naproxen is the, is the mm -hmm. uh, brand name. And this will avoid some of the side effects such as stomach um, irritation, uh, bleeding. And so that's a good thing to start with. And then we will get them into physical therapy and the goal of physical therapy is to restore your range of motion and your strength. I mean, if you're really debilitated, you won't move. And if you don't move, you end up with stiffness, contractures, atrophy. So what physical therapy does is it keeps the system going until the problem resolves. So that's sort of our, what we call tier one of treatment. Tier two would be beyond that, uh, we may do some injections. And some people are familiar with epidural injections. Uh, you know, if you if your your wife has had a um, yep. had a child and you had an epidural, that's <laughs> that's the epidural technique. It's it's the injection of a pain reliever. In this case, we would typically inject a uh, anti-inflammatory, typically a steroid and a yeah. pain reliever, a lidocaine or something like that. Yeah, when my back to, was uh, when my back was really bad. Um, this was probably like five months ago or something like that. I had I walked into my doctor's office. I, I limped into my doctor's office, and uh, they gave me something called Toradol. Uh, Toradol, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. They did an injection of Toradol along with um, some some pain relieving as well, and that did it worked really well for you know a couple of weeks, and I still maintained uh, the chiropractic stuff, and then. You know, my problem was, is I wasn't really doing the physical therapy portion that I needed to do. Yeah. And so um, yes. then, then bam, we got the COVID and then I started karate again. And that's been, it's been, <laughs> it's been game changing, like absolutely game changing. Uh, it's a, it's a new world for all of us. Yeah. And I, you know, just, uh, 
the amount of physical movement that you do in, in martial arts, uh, you know, accompanying with, you know, some of those treatments that you're talking about. So for me, karate is my, uh, is my physical therapy, right? It makes, I have to, I have to yes, get around yeah, and move, yeah. you know, and doing that three times a week is, uh, about the same amount of, you know, kind of things, I guess that you would probably prescribe to someone saying, Hey, you should do physical therapy two, three, four times a week, you know, for an hour or whatever the case may be 40 minutes, yeah. how, however you can, however long you can stand it. I, I always believe that exercise retards the aging process. It's sort of like, you know, if you leave your car out for a month, it may not start. But if you go out there every day and turn it over, it's going to act more reliably for you. And that's the same thing with the body. You got to start the engine yeah. up, which is your heart. You got to get the got to get the blood flow. You got to move the uh, the uh, uh, the infrastructure. You got to get the muscles working and the circulation. So all those things are uh, are very important. But sometimes if you're in pain then it kind of inhibits that uh, that process. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that. There's some days that, uh, you know, I walk in to go to karate and I'm like, oh, can I do this today? I'm really, I'm really hurting, you know, um, and, and, and you're right, you know, there's some, some good stuff. I don't take pain medication other than just over the counter. You know, I, I, good, I, I, good. I, I stopped with all that. Um, you know, CBD has been helpful for me too. I have a, a topical CBD ointment um, that I, I put on the back too. Um, yeah, are you guys? I mean, that's, are you? Are uh, you that's guys, something we're exploring. Yeah, was, that was going to be my next question: Is are you guys exploring the CBD and, and how that's helping with uh, some of the treatments? Yeah, I mean, the we're not prescribing marijuana. That's there's, there's a difference between the yep, two. Correct. Um, you know, they're different uh, legal. Um, restrictions around the country some states are you know marijuana is legal and some are, are not uh, CBD um, appears to be an alternative to opioids certainly we have a significant opioid crisis uh, in this country and that's not a good long-term strategy uh, to get started on you don't want to get on that train because you may not be able to get off um, there's a problem with what we call uh, a tolerance, and that's that's different than addiction. Addiction means that you're you're craving the medication. You don't really need it, but you you, you just got to have it. The tolerance means that what you take today won't work tomorrow, and so therefore you have to take more and more to get the same effect. And so, as you can see, you'll be taking higher and higher dosages, and uh, that's that's not a good place to be. Is that also the case with um, like Advil or aspirin and, uh, and, no, and some of those that's, NSAIDs? No, that's a little different. So that's not, the, the anti-inflammatories uh, work when you have a certain level of drug in your bloodstream. So um, you don't typically become addicted to Advil. It's, it, it simply works to reduce inflammation, which is causing your pain. A yeah. narcotic basically works at your brain level and basically fools your brain to say, hey, you don't have pain. That's how it works. It's not necessarily solving the problem. Are you having trouble finding hand sanitizer? Well, Spa Treat has you covered. There's no need to go searching high and low. Just visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and place your order on their easy to use website. On schedule delivery. One of the great things about this product, Spa Treat Fulfillment Team is working around the clock to provide people hand sanitizer during this time of need and get your order to you as quickly as possible, even faster than Amazon. Spa Treat also has the lowest price of any of its competitors. Spa Treat has 62% alcohol content and the FDA recommends between 60 to 80 for maximum protection. This one has 62 because it doesn't dry your hands out. I use this stuff every single day. It is fantastic. It's got certified organic extracts with the ingredients in that hand sanitizer that are of the highest quality and they're designed to leave your hands smelling and feeling fresh while protecting you at the same time. The best part, there's no tricky residue left over. None. None of that sticky stuff. Four scents available, unscented, tea tree, lavender, and lemon. And best of all, this product right here is made in the good old United States of America. A lot of companies are having trouble dealing with the current demands, so Spa Treat has dedicated themselves to providing a much needed product in the time of crisis. Spa Treat has better prices, faster shipping, and a larger supply than any of their competition. There isn't even a close second. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and enter promo code SPA SPA at checkout to 
you'll receive 5% off your entire order. That's right. Not only are they offering the lowest price available, but they're also offering our listeners a discount. This promo code is exclusive to Voice America, and only our listeners get this discount. Spa Tree and Voice America came together on this sponsorship in order to provide Americans something they could really need right now. Peace of mind. Visit SpaTreatOfficial.com and order yours today. That's SpaTreatOfficial.com and make sure you use the promo code SPA at checkout to receive 5% off your entire order. SpaTreatOfficial.com. Get your awesome hand sanitizer. I don't think I was necessarily thinking about Advil and an addiction as much as I was thinking about, um, you know, the the idea of what what I'm taking today won't won't help me the same tomorrow, right? Like, you know, if I'm taking 400 milligrams of ibuprofen today and I have that regimen for a week, um, is that 400 milligrams of ibuprofen after a week of doing that is it still helping me the same as it did on day one, or am I going to need to increase my dosage? Well, I think there is a, a, a dose response response curve. I mean, I think one of the pitfalls uh, for a lot of patients is sometimes it takes four or five days where you get the appropriate level of the drug in your bloodstream. That's the key. You have to get enough of the, of the drug in your bloodstream to do what we call tissue perfusion. You gotta get the medicine out to the tissues. So a lot of patients will take it, they'll take a few doses, say, oh, it didn't work. Well, it didn't work because you didn't get the level. So that's, that's a key uh, distinction between um, you know, taking a regular painkiller. But once you get out, say four or five days, if, you're, if your chemistry is such that you do have the appropriate levels and it hasn't solved your pain, then there may be something else involved. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's not inflammation, which is the goal of the anti-inflammatory. Maybe it's nerve impingement, or maybe it's, it's spinal instability, or, or some other um, cause of the pain. So that's when we start to delve into things like x-rays, MRIs, uh, to see, can we find a tangible reason for uh, that pain? You know, it's a uh, herniated disc are very common. I mean, as the old saying, it's all downhill after you reach 30. <laughs> so, <laughs> but literally at age 30, believe it or not, I'm gonna tell you a true fact, at age 30, 50% of 30 year olds have bulging discs. Wow. And 20% may have herniated disc. And so the issue is, it's not so much that you have a herniated disc, it's what is that disc doing? Is that disc compressing the nerve? Is there a leakage of the disc uh, releasing some of the, no- the noxious chemicals uh, on, the, on the, the nerve nociceptors? So those are the kind of things that we start to look into when we get the, the, the imaging studies to try to create this understanding of where the pain's coming from. Yeah, and that's kind of once you, you know, been experiencing something for, you know, six consecutive weeks with the pain, that's when you really need to go see the specialist and look at those Absolutely. Those, those nerve damages or the herniated discs that could be that's that's crazy that that many 30-year-olds are having some back issues and here I am about to be 40. I'm about to, I'm about to be 40, so I guess, you know, and my back stuff started started happening <laughs> I don't know, probably when I was 35, that like was very minor. I yeah, mean, it's well, it's it's sort of like having a slow leak in your tire, right? You get a slow leak. <laughs> Look at us with the automobile references. <laughs> it gets less and less. You get shorter and shorter. But sometimes you may get a blowout. And maybe you have a rupture of disc, and now you're in, you know, deep, you know, in deep trouble. But, uh, you know, every mechanical structure has a wear pattern. And I think it's fundamentally important that you you preserve that that structure you take care of it you you exercise it i and i and i always go back to you know working out your core you know that's mm-hmm. that's where your strength that's the best power hit is the best golfers have good core and if you can imagine you know someone who has a flat tire well, that rub is all over the rim well that's what's happening in your spine the vertebrae are, are have this extra hypermobility and that's why working your core is helpful it's like creating your own physiologic brace so it, it pays off great dividends when you when you get into doing those types of things yeah it's like if you have a beer belly and you have uh, that hanging over the front of you your spine is having to do some extra work to hold you up that's right that's <laughs> right this is, it's a mechanic so it's yeah. like having a, a payload in front of you <laughs> and guess what you've got to raise that payload and you know what's raising that payload is your back muscles which are now have to work extra hard to maintain the balanced posture. 
Yeah, which is, I think, why you would always say, hey, you have to work on your core. Uh, that that That's the, the part that helps to hold you up. And, you know, by helping out work out the core, too, you can reduce that beer belly. I know it because I've done it myself. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Although I think we're drinking more beer these days. <laughs> yeah, we probably are. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can I can definitely agree to that. You get a little bored. I mean, you're like, all right, I've yeah. I, I've gotten all my emails for work done. I've you know I've done some exercising. I've spent some time with the family, and then you're like, it's only seven o'clock. Yes. <laughs> what, what, yes. what to do now? Yeah, I find well, myself you know, most I, often I, reach, I, reaching for a cold one for sure. Some, sometimes there's a lot of commute time that now you don't have and that's uh, that's really interesting so yeah so like my wife is working from home I'm still commuting back and forth to my house to the studio here at Voice America and uh, yeah uh, it, it's 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 funny because my wife's like I can actually get like an extra hour of sleep each day because I don't have to commute and so you know I'm getting up at 5.30 in the morning doing my routine I'm getting ready to leave to go to work and my wife is just waking up because she doesn't have the commute. So I'm a little jealous, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm still commuting as well. I mean, I we we try to service the patients. I try to uh, keep my employees employed. Um, and, you know, and some patients felt uh, comfortable coming in and some patients uh, felt that they were not comfortable coming in. And we did a lot of telemedicine uh, mm -hmm. We try, we certainly cut down the volume of patients in the. In fact, we only have one patient in the office at a time. Uh, the, the fortunately, our medical building is quiet, so we we typically had valet parking. But now they can sort of come right in, park, and get into the elevator and come right up to the to the office. And you know, of course, you know, preparation, cleaning, uh, really letting the patient know that we're doing everything we can to make it a safe experience, but. Yeah, you know, everyone has their their needs. So. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of professional services nowadays with all the stuff that's going on where they have a system of, you know, you make your appointment and you're, you're going to go and, and you're going to go see whoever the professional is. And um, like I had to do this the other day with my doctor because we had been doing telemedicine and my doctor was finally like, Ryan, I want to see you. <laughs> I'm like, OK, well, <laughs> I'm like, I would like to see you, too. <laughs> you know, yes, I'm like, yes. Ooh, people. <laughs> And so um, the way, that, yeah, the way that they structured everything was, you know, you make your appointment and then um, when you arrive on site, you can send a text message to them saying, hey, I'm here, you know, and then they'll send yes. you a text message back saying, you know, OK, great. We'll send you a text message when it's time for you to come in. They finish up with whatever patient is there, you know, do their, you know, sanitation and disinfecting of everything. And then you get a text message that says, OK, come on in. Uh, yes. and, and I yes. really think totally. that. There's been a lot of ingenuity, I think, in business, um, whether you're a doctor or whether you're a lawyer or whatever it is, as people are visiting your, you know, your your location for those appointments. Uh, yeah. People have been, you know, I think really, really smart around how they're dealing with this and, and making changes to still operate their business and 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 still be able to service customers. But at the same time, make it a safe environment for those folks. Right. It's all a matter of how you pivot, you know, I mean, yeah. I, and I've, I'm amazed at some restaurants that have gone from you know uh, a sit down establishment to a takeout yeah uh, and they've come with some really creative uh packaging and uh menus so do you know, uh, have you know heard, we're in we're all ingenious we're all yeah we, we figure it out <laughs> have you heard of the uh the chain restaurants called denny's Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't know if you guys have them over there on the East Coast or not, but I just we, thought we I, do have them. Yes. So yes. I'm reading this fact, article. When I was a med student, I stayed at Teddy's. That's all I could afford. That was that was good. You know, the four dollar breakfast. You can't get. You can't pass yes. that up. Yes. Um, that, speaking of kind of pivoting, you know, I, I, I'm reading this article about how co how some companies are pivoting, and I, I thought it was really interesting, especially Denny's, right? There's a Denny's right up the road from our studio here. And, uh, you know, they had all these servers that were, you know, servers and dishwashers and all of these people that were there that were uh, for the sit-down restaurant experience. And uh, the, the day that they shut Arizona down and they were like, okay, you can, the restaurants are closed, you can't do any of this, Denny's puts out a press release, and I thought it was really funny because in the press release it says, you know, all all of our servers and uh, internal uh, 
uh, uh, people uh, and dishwashers and everybody have now been promoted to delivery drivers. <laughs> and so they're like, okay, well, if you can't, uh, you, you can't serve here locally or in, in the actual facility, then okay, now you're going to be a delivery driver. So the, the and the, so they can still get tips and you know the the same thing that they would normally do if they're waiting a table, uh, but they get that experience uh, and they just drop it off at your house and you can pay with their Denny's app and all that. And so yeah, it's been pretty interesting on how a lot of these companies yeah. have been pivoting. Yeah, we're we we're, we're sort of pivoting now. Also, I mean, I uh, our surgical schedule uh, has been completely shut down. I mean, I do mostly elective surgery. We don't really we're not a level one trauma center, so we don't get a lot of car crashes and those kind of major traumas. So mm -hmm. most of my surgery is scheduled well in advance. Are you guys still closed and, down? Uh, for the most part, uh, my elective schedule opens up, I think, June 10th is when we're going to be okay. able to get back to the hospital. Yeah, because I, I mean, know New York and New Jersey got hit pretty good. Yeah, we're, um, I'm literally across the, uh, across the river from New York City. Um, and we were in the epicenter. Uh, my hospital, in particular, uh, was overrun with, uh, with COVID-19. Um, it's, it's pretty scary. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, for what, for what I do, there's not much I could do for, you know, respiratory ailments. But I did have some patients who, and even some of them were, were post-ops, right? Right before this happened, they uh, were in the hospital. And so I did have to go in and out to, to you know, to care for these folks. But um, it was really eye-opening, the, the amount, the volume of patients that came in. So... Um, I think things are turning around and I think, uh, you know, you gotta, we gotta, we gotta wear a mask, we gotta do a safe distancing. Um, and I think that, um, we also need to look at, uh, what's happened east of us. I mean, I think so my, my Asian colleagues in Korea, um, they have a system out there. Uh, I think, I forget the name of it, but it's, uh, basically it's a color coded, um, it's like DEFCON, you know, you have like your reds <laughs> and your yellows. And so when it's red, you know that, oh, it's serious. There's, there's high volume of, of infection. And so you really shut things down. And whereas if it's a lighter color, you may say, uh, okay, we can relax. We can, we can come together and, and, and have more social interaction. So I think ultimately that's what, what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to, because each part of the country is different, right? So yeah. Our experience here in the East may be different than in the West. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm in so, I'm in Arizona, right? And so, you know, right. the the population density in your area versus the population density in my area is two completely different worlds. It totally, you, totally right? different. You know, like New York Absolutely. and New Jersey are stacked up on top of each other. You know, we have seven million people in our county, but there's we don't have a bunch of high rise buildings and apartment complexes. You know, like Maricopa County, the county that we live in, is like three times the size of Rhode Island. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know. Okay. And so and so everything is kind of spread out. So the 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 population density is definitely different in, in those different spaces. And I think that's why you see, you know, states like Arizona who are, uh, you know, they, they started redoing elective surgeries like on the 15th of May. Um, th those things opened up. Uh, the 15th of May, uh, they also were like, hey, uh, uh, you can you can go get your hair done and, and go to the salon. Right. And, uh, you know, they've opened up restaurants now with social distancing and some company, mm -hmm. some some restaurants are doing a really fantastic job at it. And some of them are just failing miserably because they're afraid to go to their patrons and say, hey, um, for the safety of you and everybody in here, I would like if you guys could maybe spread out a little bit They're They've been they've been so without business for so so long they're afraid to you know cause any kind of a, a disturbance within their organization at the restaurant they don't want to tell somebody hey you're too close to that person because then what if they just say okay well then I'm gonna leave you know and then they're not spending as much money and so you have you know some restaurant owners who are uh, you know being really smart about how they're operating it and other ones who are just afraid to say something because they haven't had any revenue for so long right right but I've, I've heard some interesting uh uh, post pandemic um, uh, plans. I've heard about a restaurant that's going to put mannequins uh, in the <laughs> restaurant. So you kind of have a, these mannequins dressed up like, you know, different characters you know, in between folks. 
as to make it fun yeah. uh, as, as opposed to putting up partitions and shower curtains between <laughs> us uh, to separate us. Yeah. What did I see? I can't remember which country it was. It was Korea or something like that. And they were, uh, they were taking, um, uh, Oh, but what whatever Pikachu is the 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 little stuffed animals for uh, you know and so they were they were placing those little stuffed animals uh, in in the spaces to keep everybody separated so it was kind of fun and I saw the photos from that uh, in a press release and I was like hey that's pretty cool and then uh, my daughter's super into Pokemon so when I showed her the picture she was like she was like look at all the Pokemon dad can we go eat there I'm like I'm, I would love to take you there but it's like in Korea. <laughs> That's that's amazing because I because I think the thing that came to mind was you know wow is Pikachu still around because my kids are in their twenties and I remember that when they were <laughs> coming oh. up yeah no they they the kids still love uh, love Pikachu and Pokemon my daughter you know she's got the Nintendo Switch and so she plays you know uh, video games as and, and goes and captures Pokemon and fights Pokemon and she's she's got Pokemon card games she collects you know pokemon cards like you like probably when you and i were younger you know like i collected baseball and football cards and basketball cards you know she's got you know uh, her her sleeves full of pokemon cards which is a game too um and so pretty interesting i didn't realize that you could play a uh it's almost like a dungeons and dragons style game each one of this has its powers and its points and you can add things together and different cards to accelerate this that or the other and like i can't even play the game with her because it's too complex i don't understand it <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah definitely interesting how how things are changing so you know i'll shift gears just a little bit because I, I'm, I'm a big fan of technology um i absolutely love uh you know drones and robots and artificial intelligence and blockchain and all that kind of stuff and i was you know reading through some of the information that you have and uh one of the things that you like to do in your spare time is play with robots right yes yes uh, we're um i'm working uh we created a company called c2 medical robotics with uh, Professor David Capillary. He's someone I've worked with uh, uh, at Stevens Institute. We were teaching um, medical robotics and the kids were required to come up with uh, projects. And um, you know, because we're sort of engineers, I came uh, to work with them and, and um, came up with ideas. And the kids started to work on some of these uh, uh, projects uh, robotic uh, tools for the spine and so I gave him a challenge uh, and as time has gone on this this technology has advanced and then we decided to say hey you know maybe there's some commercial um, application here so we're in the process of of the working in the lab and trying nice. to develop these these minimally invasive tools that are more facile I mean um, we, we we were able to do endoscopic work we're able to get to a small space but imagine being able to miniaturize my hand so it's it's very very dexterous dexterous uh, yeah and working on um the the neural elements in the spine so I think almost like the, the scope becomes the, like the scope becomes the robot that's right yeah the, the 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 actual scope is could be even uh disposable Mm -hmm. uh, with with all of its tools um, integrated into it, um, similar to the Da Vinci, the the Da Vinci um, typically is is performed through multiple portals. Our portal is just one portal, mm -hmm. so we have one entryway in, and all the instruments will go through that one portal. And so that's uh, what we hope to uh, to achieve uh, in the years to come. Yeah, and there's probably some really cool technology pieces that we'll start to see with composites and uh, different materials that are coming out. I, I, I work on a couple of shows here at Voice America as a producer for a show called Technology Revolution, The Future of Now. Um, and so they're talking about really cool things like Industry 4.0 as a new resurgence of industry, um, leveraging all of the tech, uh, all of the robotics and artificial intelligence and blockchain components to keep track of, you know, all 
the different inventories and delivery mechanisms and, you know, sending robots into uh, into places where uh, it'd be harmful for a human being, where the human being is remotely operating the drone or the robot to go and carry out certain right. things. And so you're starting to see um, some really cool materials that are coming out that I think will be helpful for the medical industry as well as you guys need to, like you said, miniaturize those those tools in a manner. Right. Yeah, it's probably pretty hard to miniaturize something and then still make it out of stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's right. There yeah. there there has to be advanced composite materials that uh, to, to achieve that. So those are the kind of things that we're, we're working on. So that's awesome. It keeps me busy. It's uh, but I still have my day job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. You know, Which I enjoy. Dr. Call, I appreciate you being on the radio show today. We've got about five minutes left here before we wrap up the show. But, you know, I want to talk a little bit about the future for you. I know that you're working on the robots and you're, you know, managing your practice and doing all that. But, you know, what's what's next in, in, in the way of uh, in, in orthopedics for you uh, specifically? Where is your firm going? How are you guys going to get there from a business perspective? Well, I think uh, we were very fortunate. I think that, um, you know, I have a, a skill set that is still uh, pretty much needed. Um, we certainly had some downtime here, but uh, my patient uh, schedule has just been shifted, you know, uh, weeks in a, you know, we- weeks away. So my same patients are with me. It's just a matter. I can't wait to get back <laughs> into the oh, OR, yeah. <laughs> but I think we'll, we'll pick up where we left off. I, I, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Uh, in that regard, and I was able to keep my uh, my uh, my employees, like I said, uh, here and working. Um, so, but you know, I wish the best for a lot of other industries because I think there will be uh, some disruption and and things will change. Certainly, um, yeah. some patients may lose their jobs. Um, they may not have their current insurance and that, so there's a lot of things that are in the works so we, we I honestly don't know how it will work out I'm very optimistic I mean I always want to think positive you know I think that's what keeps me going through this and uh, I know some people have had a tough time emotionally uh, through this but you just got to kind of you know take the positive side of it that's the way I function yeah, that's all, that's all you really can do. I mean, I read statistics all the time. I'm a totals numbers geek. Uh, of, of course, being in radio, we're always looking at numbers for advertisers and such. And, you know, I look at numbers of, you know, domestic violence cases and, you know, uh, be, since the COVID-19 has started, like all of that stuff is up like 40%. You know, you have everybody jam packed at home and dealing with different emotions and those kind of things and everybody's stressed out. And, you know, uh, right. my wife and I, we were just like, you know what? Who cares? Let's just let it go. You know, what are we going to do? You know, there's no, no sense in, in me getting upset at my daughter because she didn't clean her room every day, right? There's like so many other things that we could, you know, have discussions on and, and things like that. I mean, is it important for a six-year-old to learn that she needs to keep her room clean? Absolutely. Am I going to spend, you know, every day harping on it and not spending enjoyable time with my family? Absolutely not. And so I definitely agree with your your approach on situation, uh, especially knowing that, uh, you know, we're all, we're all a little bit stressed out. So let's just chill out right <laughs> right that's right <laughs> so you know i think also i'd like to at, at some point you know teach some of the younger surgeons what i know and uh although we're not in a our hospital's not a, a teaching hospital that's something i would really uh, want to get into uh, i can't cut forever i mean that's <laughs> at, at some point your skills deteriorate fortunately i'm i think i'm in pretty good shape i, I exercise i have no medical problems uh so knock on wood <laughs> but uh <laughs> but that's why i think we're going well awesome i appreciate you joining us here on finding your frequency and uh where can people find out more about you and your business and how can they get a hold of you if they want to well certainly you can start at uh, angua-spine.com and that will lead you into many other directions <laughs> Wonderful. So if you guys didn't catch that, that's E-N-G-L-E-W-O-O-D hyphen S-P-I-N-E dot com to find out more about what Dr. Cole's doing. And a uh, big round of applause for you being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And for any of you listeners who are listening to this show on your favorite podcast application or device, please make sure to rate us five stars, not four, because I think me and Dr. Cole, we deserve five stars. Right, Doc? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>
You guys are listening to Finding Your Frequency right here on the Voice America Talk Radio Network. You can tune in every week right here Friday at noon Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern and hear great conversations with thought leaders in many spaces. You know, it's not always about business. It's not always, you know, about making money. It is always about hearing the story, finding out where people come from, why they do what they do, how they tick. Uh, And want to thank Dr. Cole for being on the show today talking about his practice with uh, orthopedics and some of the things that he's been dealing with with the COVID-19 crisis and uh, especially being in uh, in the New York, New Jersey area, you know, just uh, a massively affected area over there. So, you know, sending well wishes from the West Coast over to the East Coast and all around and hoping that everybody is, you know, being able to stay safe, stay healthy and all those sorts of things. And I want to appreciate uh, uh, and thank everybody for tuning in to the Finding a Frequency show. If you ever have any uh, ideas on guests or topics or anything that you guys might want to hear from the show please send us an email info at voiceamerica.com again that's info at voiceamerica.com and my name's ryan treasure and you're listening to finding a frequency right here on voice america stay tuned for another great episode next week right here